I didn't see a thing. I asked for a magnifying glass and I just found the tenuous insu insinuation of a crooked square among the screen dots. There was nothing there. But why then does the pamphlet's author argue that these paintings are at the risk of being a mere thing? If we can see a thing, aren't we at least seeing a paint? Uh, uh, at least seeing paint? Isn't that something? I tried to discuss with Valencia, but he was very disdainful. So this is what he saw as Malevich's white on white. Mm. You know that uh, before uh, uh, the, the, the metrical system, the universal statistical uh, metrical system, people used to measure distances, by example, by the, the distance of two running horses on full speed, or the sound of a, of, of, of a cow in the, in, the, in, the, in the valley. So you were able to measure everything depending on the things that you were using, depending on the things that you were working on. You, like, like uh, warriors, used to measure till 1922 in some parts of Hungary like this 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 uh, uh, like distances according to arrows I think one of the closest desires that our current civilization aspires to is a complete continuity of the visual world where there are no interruptions between the smallest the smallest thing and the biggest thing uh, and we can basically see that and I'm not going to show any images because it would be a complete contradiction in in television shows such as CSI when someone takes a picture and begins to enhance that picture and goes in goes in, zooms in, 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 lots of times into the smallest detail to get, for example, a license plate. And what this, uh, what this fantastic action that nobody can actually do in real life shows us is a desire to have like this minute clue that would give meaning to the whole image. And that is like a desire that has always been there and that is con constantly being actualized. Well, I have this, this, uh, this idea of uh, basically like how, how can we understand the unit? By example, if I see you, who am I, who, what is the thing that I'm seeing? I'm seeing a body, I'm seeing some organs, and I'm seeing uh, 10 million cells, and I'm seeing an infinite quantity of atoms, where is the place that I could stand? Where is the limit that I would show? How can I realize that I'm talking to you? Where is the place that is those words coming from? So suddenly it seems like there's like this, this the creation of scales is like this kind of like negotiation of uh, of three different things: space, time, and perception. And in between these three, they create like a, a like a layer. And this layer is just the apparition of something. Why is it that I don't have in my head something that it's between like a molecule and uh, I don't know a cell? What is in between? They would see like the organ of a cell. But what's in between the organ of a cell and a cell? Where is the point that I will start counting on? So it, it's a strange because basically it seems that the unit is just a methodological particle. It seems that the reading, the way of unfolding things and the way to go through is just the apparition of this unit. Therefore, the way I read is creating certain tool, certain mechanism that is just, in the meantime, is just like a present circumstance 
to make something appear and therefore be able to talk. In fact, I think what you're saying has also to do with the, the, the fact that we keep using the same, I don't know if those words are precise, uh, probably the same cognitive structure that led to, to, the, uh, to the formation of words or concepts that revolve around images were things that come from the way we used to produce images. For example, in the, uh, in the whole of history, before mechanical and digital reproduction of images, we constructed a whole language around the images uh, that gave us form, drawing, uh, content, all those, co all those constellation of concepts. But now that we have other tools to construct images, it would be interesting to see how the words that are immersed in, the, in that uh, new realm of technology could be used as metaphors to construct ideas about images. And I'm thinking uh, specifically about the word resolution, which is something that we use very casually to talk about images in our, in our work or whenever we need an image in low resolution, high resolution. Uh, but the fact that, that these images, that, that this notion of resolution could be uh, very useful because then uh, what makes a, an image complex is the density of information it has. It's not just a matter of, of a form that is full of content, but different density of content depending on the way that you are going to see it. If you want to see it uh, very close, you have to have a very dense network, a very dense quantity of information. But if you want to see just like the whole, uh, we, like the whole image from afar, you don't need that density of information. There must be like different forms of understanding the perception of image from the notion of resolution. And I insist you could use that as a metaphor. That remind me, uh, uh, like this, this, this drawing. So there, there are drawings uh, taken out from teeth, from a, an individual. Uh, from Atapuerca, this, this specific guy, it's called Miguelón. And Miguelón's teeth, they're being drawn. They, don't, they are not only photographed. In order to have like the complete set of information that just a single tooth can, can give, it is not, not enough to scan it. It's not enough to take photographs. It's not enough to describe it. It's really important to draw it because uh, anthropologists achieve a very, very strange concept, which is the intellectualization of information. That is that uh, when, when, when the anthropologists are like living in this landscape, which is the, the, the tooth, they need certain shades. Like basically, the, a drawing is difference of shades. So when they are living in these shades, they are in, in need to reinforce certain details. And therefore, the, the, the historian can arrive and can immediately go into the discourse and play with all these details. That is to say that it's, it's been like, like shown. It's been like, like uh, uh, it's, it reminds me this, this idea of, 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 uh, of microhistory that is called the moral imagination. How can we do to recover history, they say, with imagination and with the possibilities of, of holding a piece of, like, like it should be there in the moment, in the present. But there is a, a paper by James Elkins that uh, also deals with bones and marks in bones. And he was analyzing uh, previous research done by Alexander Marshak about the markings on bones. And if you see these pictures, you see these markings in these bones, and you very reasonably might say that these are intentional markings. And nobody would dispute that. But when Marshak started researching these bones, she used uh, microscopes and uh, <coughs> magnetic resonance units, everything that he could do to get closer, because that's like the 
like metaphorically that's the ideal way to study uh, this kind of objects this kind of, uh, even works of art you have to get closer the closer you get the better you read the the thing or whatever that's like a metaphorical uh, m imperative <laughs> if we might say that and so Marshak started started to get closer to the, to these uh, uh, drawings and he and he made the drawings that you were talking about but then there is a point uh, if you can imagine those bones have circulated for 4,000 years in the world so some of these marks are scratches accidental scratches and some are intentional marks and it was in the closer he got the more difficult it was for him to decide if a mark was intentional and had meaning or was just an accident from just uh, the bone getting scratched accidentally for 10,000 years. If you see it from afar, it's clear that those markings are intentional. But if you try to, to decipher what they say by going in closer, you can't decide. So that ideal of a, of a really close reading is, al is almost always also um, a construct. But do you know this effect, which is called the end of history? It seems that uh, it's related to the idea of how can how do we achieve uh, uh, our own choices, and how is there's this 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 strange circumstance that when you choose something, it seems that the best chosen thing or object or circumstance.